stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, to the May uh, Parks and Rec meeting. Um, I will start by reading the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Um, do we it will, can we go to the consideration of um, minutes? Um, have any comments on the minutes? Any changes? I move approval. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been approved. Um, any Metro Council referrals today? I see Councilman Cash oh. and Councilman Druffel here two. today. Welcome. Uh, two Toms. <laughs> Our lucky day. Thanks for being here. Um, we'll move to. See, did I miss? Um, we'll move to old business. Zero four two. Th um, we had an acquisition committee earlier. Uh, uh, and these all three next, uh, the next three items come from acquisition committee. 042306 staff request approval of a donated conservation greenway easement and participation agreement for the design, construction, and maintenance of the associated greenway within the Ben Allen multifamily trail oriented development located at 301 Ben Allen Road and Ben Allen Road unnumbered. Um, the acquisition committee uh, moved for approval. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The, um, that is approved. Um, the second one, 042307 NES or Nashville Electric Service requests temporary easements and a permanent underground easement for Metro Parks for a new infrastructure installation on Gay Street along First Avenue at, Nashboro, at Fort Nashboro. The request relates to construction for a new substation and duct banks from an NES central substation, which is pivotal to the electrical service for downtown. We're asking for more information from NES for this. So, so we uh, have deferred that to um, the next acquisition committee. 042308 staff requests approval of the conservation greenway easement from the developers of the Madeira nations multifamily Development adjacent to the Cumberland River Greenway downtown located at 1650 54th Avenue North. The easement agreement will include design and construction of the improvement subject to Metro Parks design approval and permanent maintenance by the owners of the property. There is no cost to Metro for this easement. The Greenway improvements or maintenance uh, acquisition committee um, voted to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right. We're going to moving to the consent agenda. Um, I do have one item on the consent agenda. Does anybody have anything else on the consent agenda? So I'm asked Jim Hester if he would um, to come up. Um, I've got a, a note from um, someone from the Parthenon uh, about the worship protest prayer gathering uh, uh, amplification approval. And I think we've had some items we need to discuss about that before we proceed. Right. Uh, what specifically do you want to know at this point? So my understanding is they're, they were approved to um, be along the west side of the museum. Um, and they've consistently ignored parameters setting up on the east porch using amplification this weekend. Uh, there is a uh, concert, I think, on Friday night and a wedding on Saturday. And I think it'd be very disruptive for people who paid for tickets or spending a lot of money on a wedding to have someone not abiding by the, 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 um, what was approved for them to use. So I just wanted to hear your. All of that is accurate. 
Um, they uh, came to us about a month, and it's, uh, I don't think the O'Neills are here. It's Devin and George O'Neill, about a month and a half ago, and asked to do a two-week tent revival on the Great Lawn, and we denied that because we don't allow staking of large tents on the lawn or two weeks of anything out there. And we turned that down, and then they shifted and, and asked for a two-week period starting May 1st through May 14th. Um, and at that point, you know, they were um, basically saying that they were going to do what they wanted to do. They are there to protest the Athena there. And um, so I tried to work with them and said, how about if you go to the other side? We found some green space over there next to the chiller, next to the Meridian thing. And said, so you can be there and you can do what you're going to do. I uh, talked to him specifically about permitted events such as Cincy Craft. It was this weekend, the weddings, the events that were inside of Parthenon. Said, look, you can't infringe on other people who have gone through the process and gotten approved and had permitted events. They basically refused to acknowledge that. Um, but we did go ahead and put them on the consent agenda with that understanding that they would be in that spot that's on the west side of the Parthenon and that they would not have amplification that would uh, in, infringe on other people's events. But you're right that uh, since they, they did get here on the 30th and they have ignored all of those requests to not amplify, I think they've been uh, issued citations several times by Park Police. I don't know the number of times at this point, but they've been issued citations several times. I did just get off the phone with Tennessee Craft. They said it was very detrimental to their event. The Friday night event um, was a concert that the Conservancy had to rent additional amplified sound equipment to make that work. The docents and the children and the school trips that are going into the Parthenon, they're having a, a hard time even hearing the, the normal uh, narratives that the docents try to give. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty much been a problem. What do they have approval they have for? There's no approval for anything at this point. There is a, an, an item on the agenda to have their, I, I don't want to call it a revival, but their protest on the green space uh, opposite on the west side. And But I don't think well, we have, like they don't have any indication. It sounds like they don't listen to any of our rules or abide by anything that we have allow them to do correct that, that's right okay so i mean i would think we should entertain a motion that we deny them this i make that motion that we deny this second is there any further discussion um i would like to ask park police so to because people are paying a lot of money to rent the parthenon and have weddings and all that so if we can just be on alert you know that if they get there we have to remove them or ask them to leave so because it's obviously been detrimental, as Jim's been saying. So. The police have been there monitoring. They've yeah. had somebody there pretty much all the time that they've been there, mainly to keep it from getting out of hand, I think. But, uh, and, okay. and it could, and this is another important part, is I think it may ramp up next week. They, they're putting out flyers, and they're going to have additional speakers and bands and singers, and I think there's a good chance it'll ramp up next week. All right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda except for the worship, protest, and prayer gathering. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda is approved with that change. Um, Just a minute. Council, Councilman Taylor is here, you were saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't see him. All right, um, let's move. Oh, this is not agenda. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right. We're moving to new business. Um, all right. New business 052302 staff request approval of a permit for use of park space for the Fairfield Missionary Baptist Church to host a community garden on the property located at 3854 Whites Creek Pike, Nashville. The permit is for a period of one year contingent upon all permit obligations being met. Um, and there's a copy um, for review uh, here. So um, who would... Staff recommends approval for that. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 052303. Uh, 
staff request approval of a permit for use of park facility for notes for notes to administer a music studio for parks after school youth at the Cleveland Community Center. The permit is for a period of one year contingent upon all permit obligations being met. That recommends approval. And I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 052304, the Nashville Steam Preservation Society request approval to amend the current lease agreement between Metro Parks and the Nashville Steam Preservation Society to include a four-year extension of their restoration period as stipulated in the Locomotive 572 agreement, um, which was on the parks agenda item um, from 2016. I can't believe it's been that long. I remember that. Um, where are, is there any update on the restoration? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have an update. Oh, good. My name is Joey Bryan. I'm representing the board of directors for the Nashville Steam Preservation Society. Um, we're on track, if you will, yeah. um, for a full <laughs> steam up. You couldn't wait to say that line. You practice that. That's right. All the way up here. Um, we're thinking about two more years until we're fully operational. Uh, we just got the wheels back uh, from being fully serviced and repaired in Chattanooga. We're hoping to do a steam test early next year then uh, complete the final assembly or reassembly of the locomotive and then hopefully begin uh, tourist operations and working with parks and all your programming uh, hopefully in 2025 today we've raised more than 2.1 million dollars and we are currently doing our uh, what we're calling the last mile campaign to re to raise the remaining three hundred fifty thousand dollars to complete the mechanical restoration and if anyone's interested to come down and tour the shop and see the progress i'm just happy to set up any tour dates Quite the labor of love, that project. A lot of sleepless nights, yeah, that's for sure. exactly. Um, I entertain a motion to extend uh, the restoration period. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 052305, uh, Mr. Philip Claiborne, founder of the Two Rivers, Friends of Two Rivers, request permission to begin hosting events at Stone Hall and request approval of proposed fee new for Stone Hall. Uh, Mr. Claiborne also requests approval of proposed fee changes at Two Rivers Mansions. Mansion. Staff recommends approval. If you all will recall, um, I think last month Friends of Two Rivers um, came and did a presentation and also talked about the expansion to Stone Hall. This item should actually have been on that agenda as well. Um, but we do recommend approval for, for these fees. Motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 052306, staff requests acceptance of a $2,000 donation from the Friends of Shelby Park and Bottoms for the Wellness Community Recreation and Cultural Arts Division. Staff recommends approval. Motion. Motion to Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. 052307. Staff requests acceptance of an in kind grant not to exceed $5,000 from the National Youth Hockey League to fund the purchase installation of up to 20 door wrap graphics for, lock, for locker room and other doors on rink A and B of the Centennial Sportplex. There's no required match or other obligation by parks associated with this grant. Staff recommends approval. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Discussion? Um, um, yeah, I do have, I'm just trying to understand, are these ads or wayfinding? What, like, what are these door wraps? They're basically just a wrap that goes around the doors. The doors get beat up at the sportsplex because of the hockey sticks and everything else. This will make the doors look more attractive. The only thing that we'll have is the NYHL logo on it. It will not have any advertising of anything other than the NYHL logo. Uh, NYHL has been a longstanding resident youth hockey league that uh, is our resident program that is there. For clarifying. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 052308, staff requests acceptance of an in-kind grant valued up, up at 
up to $38,750 from the Joe C. Davis Foundation and Friends of Mill Ridge Park for a planning study to determine the scope of work for phase two of their Mill Ridge Park master plan. There's no required match or other obligation by the parks associated with this grant. The study will be paid for directly by the Joe C. Davis Foundation. The study will be undertaken in collaboration with the final approval by Metro Park staff. Staff recommends approval. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I'm sorry, I'm just, I do have a clarifying question. So the, the study is being done by Metro or by, done by a third party? Tim. The study would be done um, in collaboration between Friends and Metro Parks. Um, they would enter into a contract with a, a planning and landscape architecture firm to produce the study. I see. So, um, okay. I think the way it was written was confusing, but I get it now. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. 052309, Friends of Warner Parks requests acceptance of a Sweat grant for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $44,707.05. The grant will be distributed via quarterly reimbursements to Metro Parks. Summer sweat crew worker, uh, step one and step four, I'm not sure what that means, in the amount of $36,299.58. Winter sweat crew worker, step four, in the amount of $8,407.47. Friends of Metro Parks will reimburse grant total amounts exceeded due to hourly wage changes or COLA, et cetera. This grant does not require a match nor any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Staff recommends approval. And just a clarifying question, SWEAT is an acronym for? SWEAT? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, the, what's what the is that acronym? Come to, come to the mic. Come to the mic. Come to the mic, please. Don't be afraid. Um, special work, education, and trails. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. I was the only one that didn't know it. Education <laughs> and trail grant. Yeah. Commerce. Um, thank you for that. We learn something every day. Um, all right. Uh, I don't think we have a motion yet. We don't. Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 052310. Friends of Warner Parks requests acceptance of a staffing grant for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of 50,669 cents. The grant will be distributed via quarterly reimbursements to Metro Parks. Friends of Warner Parks staffing salaries in the amount of 48,769 cents. Copier in the amount of $1,900. Friends of Warner Parks will reimburse the grant total amounts exceeded due to hourly wage changes or COLA, et cetera. This grant does not require a match nor any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Staff recommends approval. I make a motion to approve. Sure. Second. So, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion carries. Mm -hmm. 052311. Centennial Park Conservancy requests acceptance of a staffing grant for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $19,709.23 to fund the continuation of a part-time position at the Parthenon Museum store. Staff Concessions, whoops, I'm sorry. Concessions clerk uh, in the amount of $19,709.23. Centennial Park Conservancy will reimburse grant total amounts exceeded due to hourly wage changes or COLA, et cetera. This grant does not require match nor any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Staff recommends approval. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 052312. Uh, Armor Strong Tennis Association requests permission to host a tennis tournament at the Centennial Sportplex with a waiver of usage fees for the tennis court and to raise funds to donate to the Nashville Parks Foundation. Donations from the tournament to Nashville uh, Parks Foundation will be used for repairing and resurfacing the tennis courts at Centennial Sportsplex. Staff recommends approval. 
Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in. What, what is it? When is the tournament? Is it? What are the dates of the tournament? Anyone know the dates? John. This summer, though. But you have one. Pardon? You have one. You'll have dates pick up. Uh, or we just need to. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Zero five two three one three Greenways for Nashville request approval to raise funds and request acceptance of an in-kind grant valued at at up to two hundred seventy thousand dollars for improvements to thirty Greenway trailhead and signage sites on their Cumberland River, Mill Creek, Richland Creek, and Seven Mile Creek Greenways. Staff recommends approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries 052314, the Belmont Hillsboro Neighborhood Association request approval to officially name the property located at the northeast corner of Portland Avenue and 21st Avenue, Nashville as Portland Park, the Metro Park's owned green space is located in Belmont Hillsboro area. Uh, and it has an annual permit to plant a community managed pollinator garden in the space. Should that be deferred? Yeah, defer to the naming company. Okay. We'll need defer to naming. 052315, the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, and we have some representatives from there here today. Request permission to host the 2023 New Year's Eve Live Nashville's Big Bash event at Centennial Park. Permission for amplification, consumption, selling of alcohol, and to remain in the park after 11 p.m. So uh, we have Butch Spirit and Dina Ivy um, here with us, and I would like to ask Dina to come up. What's it do? You... No, I thought you, were, you had something to say. No, okay, Dina. I was going to ask if you would give us an overview of the event, just so we all know what we're talking about, because uh, we've gotten emails on this, et cetera. Thank you. Thanks for your time today. Um, I'll make this as brief as I can, but I do want to give you a good overview of what we are looking at. As you know, the CVC has produced New Year's Eve event for 14 years. The last six have been at Bicentennial State Park. And I do want to say, because I think it's important for you to know that Bicentennial has welcomed us back and that is an option for us, but we are exploring different possibilities. The main reason is because they have a new rate structure in place for all of their events and it's really outpriced our budget and um, not it's a it's this it's a disadvantage for the large free public events so we're looking at other options which of course is Centennial Park we've met with the Conservancy staff we've met with the Conservancy board we have met with um, done a community meeting with Councilman Brandon Taylor. We've met with the park staff. We followed up to Monique's questions uh, from her staff after that meeting. So I uh, wanted to come in front of you today and, and tell you the same thing that we've told them. Um, with all of our events, we always look at ways to improve it and to move to the right location. And as you know, we've moved around 4th of July quite a bit within the riverfront area. The event is one evening. It starts at 5.30. Uh, with the doors opening, the show begins at 7. Since we moved it off of Broadway, the event is much more like a festival than just a concert. Families attend. We haven't had any problems, any issues. We've had one arrest, and that was a homeless person that wanted to be arrested to have a warm place to sleep that night. So we haven't had any trouble since we've been at Bicentennial Park. We stress security and safety. We fence off the area, and we have hundreds of private security as well as Metro PD. Last year, we sold 33,000 hotel rooms. So it's an impact of about $38 million in visitor spending to the city. The number of attendees varies. It's uh, really on a flow. Depends on who's on stage at the time. They come in, they go out. And after um, 
we've met with the different groups, we have agreed to cap it at 125,000 people. And again, that would be more at midnight. And Centennial Park is about two and a half times bigger than Bicentennial Park. Um, again, most people would be at midnight to watch the note drop. We cover the um, area closest to the stage, about 200,000 square feet of flooring to protect the grass some years i mean last year was great because it had frozen and the grass was in great shape some years it's been muddy we'll we'll tell you that but we do everything we can to repair the park and we always leave it in better shape than we found it sometimes we've even uh, fixed things that weren't that we didn't break like light poles we've replaced more light poles than were even affected by us we've been a longtime supporter of centennial park and the conservancy and musicians corner this event will be a fundraiser for the conservancy we'll make a considerable donation we will also pay to the conservancy we'll also pay park fees and pay to close the parthenon on the 30th and 31st the rest of the park will not be affected um, as we're moving in and moving out because we will fence it off closer to the stage so that the park will be open to all the ones that want to use the park we have never had any major complaints from the neighborhoods around bicentennial like germantown they've welcomed us there and they welcomed us back we've met with them before and after and with any concerns and we've always made the changes that they've requested and the last thing i'll say is the event will be broadcasted on cbs it's a five-hour special so the parthenon will look fantastic on tv and i'll leave you with we have always the cbc has always been good stewards of of whatever park we use we use riverfront for july 4th we use walk of fame park and we always take good care of it and leave it better than we found it and we're just asking that you give us a chance give us one year see how it goes um, because we know that we'll do the right thing because we want to be invited back. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for being here. Tell me your last name. Dana. Ivy. Ivy. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I could <laughs> not call it to my uh, yeah. remembrance. One of the things that um, um, I appreciate about, appreciate about the CVC is that you absolutely leave it in better. Um, better than it, than it was, you know, before. You. I do appreciate as well um, the work that has been done to bring um, that 38 million to the city. But one of the things, and I say but, but one of the things that has come to us is the uh, concern from neighbors um, who live in the vicinity. And it is the job of the CBC to bring tourism to Nashville. But one of the complaints from citizens who long-term residents and myself is that there's not a, a, a focus on us. There's not a focus on from, from, from the government on um, the, the needs and the interests of its citizens. And so while that's not your, what you do, it is something I think that the, um, that we have to take into consideration as neighbors are complaining about yet another event that will uh, be in their community. And so this will be a new community for this event. Um, you already have the partnership with um, uh, Germantown and, you know, those mm -hmm. communities around there. And so I, I guess I'm asking, I understand the fee structure has gone up mm -hmm. and, and everything is going up. Have you looked at Riverfront Park? Have you looked at the Titan Stadium? Have you looked at things that remain downtown since you already have the partnership? established to have the event. Mm -hmm. um, well, you may recall that we used to be on Broadway, used to be at Riverfront, and we outgrew it. Um, it's, it's a little more challenging because of all the honky-tonks in this narrow street. So that one is, is out of the question. And the Titan Stadium would be for, uh, for right now because of the Music City Bowl and the Titans playing there. So that's, that's not an option. Um, yeah, uh, one thing I, I will add, and I didn't say this, and I should have said this, is this event last year, we always do research and surveys when people are there, 50% are Nashvillians that are locals that come to the event. So we hope that people will enjoy it and celebrate one night with us as well as with the visitors that are in town. Ms. Ivy, can you compare uh, parking and traffic disruption at a location like Centennial Park with being downtown? Mm -hmm. um, Metro PD traffic division would be, you know, working on the traffic plan and they were here for the community meeting and uh, assured us that, you know, they would work with the neighborhoods. They would make sure that, you know, the people aren't parking in front of their uh, 
houses and we're talking to HCA and Vanderbilt we we haven't you know confirmed anything yet actually Butch has a breakfast meeting with Vanderbilt tomorrow to work through the parking issues to be able to use their parking lots my question is I think for the parks department or I'm not quite sure who who to direct this to so um, so the Great Lawn was a $12 million investment, um, a $12 million imp improvement um, that was a, a, a private-public partnership. Um, so can somebody from the Parks Department speak to and remind us the construction timetable, how long it took to construct that, when it was completed, how long it was inaccessible, um, and um, speak to the Great Lawn? So I will call uh, two park staff up, uh, both Tim Nage and Phil Luckett. So Tim on the the construction side, development side, and then Phil on the maintenance side. Sorry, what were the questions? <laughs> um, talk about the Great Lawn, the, how long it took to construct, how long it was inaccessible to the public, when it was completed, and just to confirm that my number is $12 million, I, that that was the... Um, I can verify all of this with a follow-up email, but construction was approximately uh, 18 months. So it was the bulk of it was uh, not available to the public during that period, although we um, opened portions of it as they were completed. Um, the budget was approximately 11 million. My recollection is that um, it was about 6 million in Metro funds, 5 million uh, from the Conservancy. And pardon the other... The, and the, the, when it was completed. Has it been open for about 18 months, about a year and a half, I believe? Yeah, Push, pushing two years. And um, I think my questions, um, Phil, I'm glad you're there, because um, I think I'm, I'm understanding that the, with the Great Lawn being Bermuda, Bermuda has its own tricky qualities, and, and I think having a big event on, um, on Bermuda can be a challenge. So. Can you speak to um, what it would mean for 125,000 people to be having a New Year's Eve on the Great Lawn? Well, Bermuda grass at that time of the year is what we call dormant. People like to say dead is not dead. It's just dormant. It's brown. Uh, it's active time. It's just now starting that it's going to be greened up and growing. So we have events like what's going to happen this summer. We can recover from that quite easily. It's more problematic. Uh, to recover from wintertime damage because you really don't know where you are until about April, late April, to start greening up. You know, so you, they would have to, that we'd have to come back in and do some resodding and, and whatnot. How that would affect early, the early events, like we just had the crafts, first crafts fair, is still remains to be seen. We've never done this before. Uh, I think the biggest, um, population we've had on the Great Lawn is 10,000 for that one event. We're going to have three 10,000 uh, event nights in June. That's a little easier to recover from. We've also asked, I think we'll ask that they cover more of the Great Lawn. You know, we, as a matter of fact, we'd like to have whatever is in the area that, that is going to be trafficked um, by the public, that 125,000. That we would like to have all of that, you know, all of that covered, um, especially if it's a normal December and we get a ton of rain and you get a lot of mud, you know, then we're, there's going to be some recovery time, and that recovery time won't be immediate. It'll be it'll be pushed into the spring. Um, so, whether or not Bermuda survives, we already got some wood carriers this year because of the extremely cold temperatures that we had in December that we're having to try. We're going to try to push through what we can get growing, but. Um, uh, if that answers, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, or if there's did. something more specific, it did. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep drilling down because I, I think okay. um, no, I think rain is a likely event or needs Very to much be so. I mean, it's, it's, considered. We're, we're normally, we're normally wet. Our winters are normally pretty wet, and there's no dry time and there's no evaporation at, the, at, at that time. So they things stay, things stay damp, wet longer. Right. Um, so that could be a challenge to having that number of people. Um, and I, I guess on covering the grass, I was under the impression on a personal project that covering grass can be tricky, even even 
even though it's off growing season, but I'm not con I'm not as concerned if it was growing season like they do the Titan Stadium when they have all these concerts, right? Uh, in, in the year, yeah, that's going to kill it. They basically are resodding the entire the entire stadium uh, once that's done. Okay, with the flooring system that they have, the it's like a I beam with flooring on top. I think that helps that that situation. It leaves space for the grass to, to breathe, to breathe, and it's dormant. It's just sitting there, not doing anything. It's not taking up anything, not doing active growing. So I think that would be okay. Uh, we would have to see how that turns out after after that first year. But I'm I'm a little less concerned about that as I am about all the foot traffic and damage that uh, that that wet and, and muddy condi conditions. I cannot tell you how that's going to turn out because that's just unknown. Right. Um, I think my next question might be real for Jim, um, because I'm interested in, in understanding um, <clears throat> the concerts that um, are next month, um, the AEG concerts. Um, can you speak to how those, um, how AEG, which is, I guess, a concert, concert um, promoter, how did they come up with their capacity numbers for um, the Great Lawn? We actually told them how many they could do. Uh, it's it, They came in 2019, I think, a, a couple of years ago, and did a show. It was the Dan Shea show. At that point, we talked to them about doing 10,000, which was, at that point, the largest. It was And the lawn was brand new. And so we wanted to test it and kind of see, you know, what it was capable of, what would be the impact on the park, how would things go. They agreed to do 10,000. I think they had right about 10,000 for that show. They came back to this this time, and the conversation was, do we go a little more and make it a little bigger? And they wanted to go three nights. So that one's a three-night show, but they're going to keep it at a maximum of 10,000 a night for th for three nights in a row, though. So, But we told them how many we were willing to, to uh, accommodate. And um, can you or somebody um, else maybe talk about other cities and other parks, similar parks. We, I think, um, had um, an email that came in about Centennial Park, um, Central Park in New York, and I've heard comparisons in Austin and, and other cities. So um, I think it would be helpful for us as we're deliberating to understand how other cities handle urban parks and urban parks that have just undergone a big improvement. So I'm aware of the Central Park rules and they've actually got a really great, you know, special event kind of handbook on how to handle large events. And they do not ever allow more than 60,000 on in the Central Park Great Lawn. There's a little bit of back and forth on what is the Great Lawn because I've seen nine acres and 55 acres, but the total number is, is 60,000 and they never allow more than 60,000. And then there was another one in San Francisco that I think I'd heard about. I don't know the exact numbers, but generally it seems like what we've seen is it's a 50, 60,000 cap for the for their park space. So it sounds like we're in unknown territory. <laughs> we are, and then Centennial is a larger park. I mean, it's, it's, I think that's one of the things CBC will say is it's much large, larger than Bicentennial. But when you talk about the impact on that central Great Lawn event area, it's, it's, they tend to limit it. Thank you. Dina, how many people did you have last year in, in the park? In that park? Yeah. Um, Councilman Taylor, would you like to say a few words? Hello, everyone. Uh, Councilman Brandon Taylor. Um, before I get started, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Spearden on his retirement soon or whenever it comes. I, I keep telling uh, Mr. Spirit, and uh, that that he that I'll believe it when I see it. So, thank you for your service. Listen, um, so the council doesn't have a say on this, and so I really wanted to come in, and uh, my goal is to uh, ask you all to um, spend some time and and give the neighbors uh, in this in this area a chance to kind of come to this forum in in a public comment period. Uh, to be able to kind of voice their opinions, some of the opinions that I've heard, um, people that are really excited about the opportunity for this and then others that have some concerns as well. And I think that that as a council member, um, and I've got a few colleagues here, so correct me if I'm wrong, our goal is to listen to the citizens and uh, 
and then determine uh, the best outcome, therefore, uh, moving forward. And so I think with this not coming to the council body um, and it's coming to you and you all will be making those decisions, uh, my request would be that you all have uh, a form of a public comment period uh, for them to kind of share their thoughts, feelings, specifically the neighbors that are right here uh, that I represent in District 21 um, that are next door to the park. So um, I'd ask that you guys uh, maybe consider that, uh, maybe defer this and, and consider that uh, having an opportunity for the next meeting. Uh, to be able to do so and then make your final decision at that meeting. Did you go to the, um, y'all had a, a neighborhood meeting. Were you there? We did, yes. Okay. I, I hosted the How meeting. How was that? It was good. I think it was, um, I think it was a, a great start to the conversation for the neighbors. Uh, that was the first time that the residents were, uh, I'd been talking with CVC for quite some time and one of my main goals was to have a community meeting. And that was the first time the residents had a chance to kind of hear uh, what the plan was, ask questions, uh, and then from that moment, go back home and kind of chew on it, right? And so they've been able to do that. I've received some feedback from them. And, uh, and one, of the, one of the questions or concerns I have had is if I'm not making the decision as the council member, who is? And I made that uh, uh, understanding that it be the Parks Board. And if so, how can we communicate with them? And so uh, to answer that question, I've, I've told my constituents that uh, I'll be able to come and ask you all if you guys would uh, spend some time visiting with them as they uh, share their feedback with you. Thank you. So, um, I, no, and, and I'll add one more thing. I think the, uh, the meeting was, was great. Uh, we had it right here. So thank you guys for letting us host it here. We were able to record that meeting. Uh, so it'll be on um, our YouTube channel, uh, Metro's YouTube channel. Uh, it, it, I think a lot of questions were answered. Um, I think a lot of concerns were, uh, were navigated. I do think that there were some other questions that maybe bubbled up after the meeting, uh, being that it was our first uh, conversation. But um, I think it was, it was a great meeting. It was well attended. And I, I think that, um, um, uh, that, I think that based on some of the feedback from the CVC, they've uh, really paid attention to some of those concerns and feedback. And so, um, so I think that that's a point that I would like to make for you today. There's been one community meeting. That's correct. And um, Mr. Spearden will meet with HCA tomorrow. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and then adjacent council districts, because it or who? Right. So we have uh, adjacent council districts, uh, uh, Council Member Murphy, Council Member Cash. I've had uh, individuals from their uh, council districts reach out to me directly. And, uh, and I believe, I mean, of course, you know, we can't discuss these things. So I believe that uh, I see them in the email. But I believe that Council Member Cash and uh, Council Member Murphy have also communicated directly with, with their constituents as well. And Council Member Cash is here. Mm -hmm. Did you want to speak? Thanks. I want to echo uh, some of what Council Member Taylor has said. Um, I did have a couple of constituents who came to the, the meeting that he had um, earlier or in April, and I think it was helpful for them. They, um, I think, went in thinking, heck no, and, and some of their concerns were um, addressed, not all. They didn't go to heck no to heck yeah, but um, still wanted some things answered. Uh, I, I have spoken with some folks at the uh, CBC and CBC and um, am wanting to have a meeting. Uh, and it can, you know, it could, I'm, my district's right on the other side of West End. I know uh, Council Member Murphy has constituents in Richland West End, right on the other side of I-440, that um, have concerns and questions and and want uh, want some of them addressed and answered. Uh, so I would I would like some time to be able to coordinate that. We had kind of a busy April uh, in Council, so I haven't yet, but I'm uh, ready to schedule something in the next couple of weeks and. Uh, uh, have have you know, further the community discussion there are definite concerns one of the top ones um is you know protecting all that uh good work we did on the uh, on improving centennial park um just the volume of traffic and concerns that come with that um 
so I, I'm, you know, I, I've heard from a, I heard a number of different viewpoints. There are some that are kind of like, oh, it's it's close. That would be kind of nice, but uh, more that are that have some some real apprehensions about it. And I would like a chance to um, share those and and see if see if the apprehensions are you know can can be alleviated or if uh they want to chime in and uh uh voice that they're opposed to it thanks dina what kind of um timeline realistically uh, come, come to the Of course, the sooner the better because it's a big event to plan. Um, we would at least need to to know by June. What uh, you mentioned that it used to be a riverfront park. What was the limit at riverfront riverfront park when you exceeded the limit of, to be able to have the event there? Um, there was never a limit put on it, but we were over, I mean, we were close to 300,000 at that point. And it was, it was because people would come out of the honky tonks to see the note drop and it just got to be too crowded because the narrow street. And one thing I, I didn't say before, and I, I want you to know is if you've been to this event, you will know that the majority of the crowd is just right up by the stage. And then when you get past, I don't know, you know, probably 40, 50 feet, then it just sprinkles out and you, you can walk around. It's not this dense crowd the entire um, you know, length of the park or anything like that. You can see where people, I mean, you can even look at our pictures and you'll be able to see that it's all concentrated close to the stage and that's where we have flooring. And then out in the crowd, people are walking around. It's not a big, you know, big crowd. I wanted to ask about the fees, <clears throat> the fees. Could you clarify what um, the fees were at Bicentennial Park last year, what the proposed fees are this year? sharing <laughs> only because I don't know if that in ballpark numbers we're spending about one hundred and twenty five thousand on rent and it looks like it's going over four hundred thousand uh, that's a big jump in the state park that's bicentennial, bicentennial yes, that's yeah. park, which that's what prompted us we yeah you know, we're a free event we're a community event we're a national television show we don't have the resources to charge and have a gate and cover that. So it's it's a new formula they created. It works great for ticketed smaller events. It does not work great for a free large event. And we've shared that with them, but you know, we haven't told them we're not coming back either. Great, thank you. And um, I might just have a question for um, Parks um, on how our structure regardless of the donation or the pr pr proposed donation what would our fees be if that wasn't included just uh, maybe jim could speak to um sorry jim um but in in case you couldn't hear i can repeat it i kind of don't want to say but it's uh, seventeen thousand would be the actual parks fees, but that wouldn't cover. They have volunteered to cover the closure of the Parthenon for the, the days, at least two days, and that's a whole number number that we have to work up as what that would be. I don't know that I, we know that. Also, overtime for um, park, yeah, there's different commitments we would ask, like covering overtime staff or our staff to come be there for load in, load out, and to watch it. So there'd be money involved with that. We hadn't figured out that number yet. And there's other commitments they've made as far as fencing and things like that. I think the next biggest number would be the Parthenon buyout. It'd be a two-day Parthenon buyout that would be substantial. I think it's just, I, I thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you for... Um, uh, another number I can give you, too, is okay. AEG is actually paying about 165000 for a one day. For three? Three days, three days. Okay, one sixty-five. Okay, that's a hel helpful data point as we consider our park policies and our, our rates just to kind of compare how how it is in the market. So thank you. Did you want to talk again? Okay. Um, all right. So I think everyone's had their say. Um, so I will open it up to the board. To... I'd make a motion we defer 
and try to get more community input. I'm very appreciative of the fact uh, $38 million to the city. I think that's fantastic. 33,000 hotel, hotel rooms, I think that's fantastic. However, uh, we need to be comfortable that this is something that we can do effectively. And I certainly understand the difference in cost, but if we damage that lawn, that cost pales in comparison. So I, I think we should defer. I'll second. Come up to the to that part of our commitment also is we will put the lawn back better than we found it so we've done that every year at bicentennial there will be some wear and tear so we understand we've even hired a full-time horticulturalist who follows us around on top of working with your team but we understand that's a whole separate expense that we know we'll, we're responsible for So I have a motion for deferment for one month. I, I second it. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor of the deferral for one month? Aye. Opposed? We'll defer for a month and hopefully have you an answer next month. I think it'd be helpful to send some pictures to the board, uh, like you were talking about, so we can kind of, you know, it's nice to visualize and see something, how it worked last year. That would be good. I think. And any other information, more information, the better. And can we get follow-up of your progress on whatever Vanderbilt says about parking, et cetera? Just clarify that um, we're having a public, the, the meeting will include um It would be another public, public meeting, correct? It's what we, I've heard from two councilmen that we need. Okay. Yeah, I heard that council, Councilman Cash is coordinating a, okay. a public comment meeting. So there, there's going to be public comment in our parks meeting, or no, um, a separate meeting. A separate meeting for public, for public okay. comment. So I, th I thought that was requested. Councilman Taylor also requested public comment at this meeting. Okay, at our next meeting. That's um, fine. That's fine. Yeah, June. absolutely. I just want to make sure we heard both. Thank you. I didn't hear that. Okay. Thanks for clarification. So we'll have both, a public meeting and a public meeting here. All right. We'll move on to special presentations. Um, West we'll Jenny Hannon to come up, Friends of Warner Parks, to present annual update to the board. Um, we ask that these presentations are seven, no more than seven minutes, please. Thank you. Ready? <laughs> Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here today. It's always a pleasure to share with you what we've done in Warner Parks over the last year. And I uh, want to welcome a few of my team members here. I have a board member out there, Joe Hall, and um, Molly, who you heard from, who knows what sweat is when we didn't, and uh, Caroline Cruz, who's our uh, urban naturalist, and Jane Avenger, who is my COO. So we're all pleased to be here today to share with you what's going on at Warner Parks. Our goal over the next year, and, and has been, but as especially we move forward, is creating sustainable solutions for Warner Parks. Warner Parks will be 100 years old in 2027. And um, as we all know, and as we've just heard, Nashville has changed tremendously over the last 10 years, and the same in Warner Parks, where we've always been a big park, but a park not um, necessarily utilized by all of Nashville and it is now very much a park that is used by all of Nashville locals and visitors and so it's really our mission to protect and preserve this park for as long as we uh, for the next hundred years for our next generation we have four areas that we really focus on enhancing park infrastructure, conserving our NATO ecosystem, serving our communities and again to be sustainable for the next 100 years we work very much in partnership with Metro Parks and uh, the, the team here that Monique has put together has been a tremendous asset and resource for us as well. Uh, our areas of focus are wildlife research and education, natural resource management, historic restoration, trail preservation and maintenance, community engagement and recreation, and land acquisition are the four focuses when we think about how we're going to invest in Warner Parks. One program that I'm really proud of that we have expanded this year is our urban nature program. This nature program has three elements to it. We have a year-round nature detectives club. We have a pen pals program that comes to Warner Parks in the summer. And we have fall campfires and night hikes throughout the year. Our plan is to expand this program to initial community centers, work with closer relationships with the schools, increase our field trips, and enhance the quality and relevance of our programs. And Caroline Cruz has already done a fabulous job in um, all four of these areas. 
think it's very interesting where Warner Parks is our green dot down here in the corner. We actually serve um, through a, a nature program 21 of our 26 park community centers. As you all know, the community centers don't um, have necessarily have the resources in all areas. And so we really try and provide the uh, element of na na bringing nature and Warner Parks to these community centers. Each of the dots on there are the 21 community centers where Caroline goes on a year-round basis. Those community centers then come to Warner Parks in the summer through our Pen Pals program. And we'd love for you all to uh, join us in one of those programs. They're tremendous. The gray area is the area that has um, the census is overburdened and underserved um, by disadvantaged and um, according to the climate and economic justice screening. And we uh, really focus a lot of programs on those areas as well. In addition, Caroline is working with the teams uh, and the nature centers at Beeman Park, Mill Ridge Park to expand the programs and help those kids who are in those community centers that are closer to those specific parks enjoy those parks as well. So this is a program that we used to have a part-time person. We expanded uh, to a full-time person this year and uh, one we're particularly proud of. Also at the Nature Center, our ongoing bird program, Nashville was just designated as an urban bird treaty city, and that's a tremendous uh, designation for Nashville, worked very closely with the Nature Conservancy, with, this, with the mayor's office, and all the uh, regional parks to get that done. Uh, my favorite project is invasive plant control. We know that if we don't eradicate the invasive plants in Warner Parks, we will not have a park in 20 years. And our goal is to be invasive-free WP by 2027. We're working with invasive plant control on this project. We've invested over a million dollars in that project so far. We've created, we've, um, uh, treated about 1300, over 1,300 acres of the park with another 1,300 acres of forest-assisted area to go. We also have a tree trust program that we relaunched a few years ago. Our goal is to plant 27,000 trees by 2027. We have a number of partners in that, prog in that process. This year, last year we planted 4,000 trees. This year we have 6,000 in the ground with another 1,000 to go. This is a really important initiative with our emerald ash borer, which I know you all are very familiar with. We estimate um, that we will lose over 15% of our canopy in Warner Parks, which will be a devastation to our to our parks uh, system. And we know that when the, the trees, we lose the trees, the first thing that goes to that open space are the invasive plants. So we're really fighting a war on all, all sorts of fronts. Uh, we are working with um, Phil and the maintenance department on those trees that are coming down. And that press has already started. So we, we know we'll lose over 6,000 trees in Warner Parks from the Emerald Ash Borer. We have just finished uh, a trail restoration project where we restored over 16 miles of the primitive hiking trails. We have some before and after pictures of that. Again, this project was done really through the lens of preservation and sustainability throughout um, the next 20, 40, 50 years of the parks. Along that vein, uh, there were bridges built in the park years ago, 20, uh, 30 years ago, and um, they were all very uh, starting to, to come down and we have invested in uh, putting eight new bridges in the park. It's a significant investment. There are three, uh, if you can see on the right, in Percy Warner Park and five in Edwin Warner Park. And I assure you these uh, bridges will last 100 years. They are uh, fiberglass with uh, wood uh, on the outside. We have carpenters working on it. They are beautiful additions to Warner Parks, and we really worked hard on keeping the uh, aesthetics of the park. We didn't want to put fiberglass bridges or things that did not fit with the in, within the park. So those that project will ho hopefully be complete by the end of June. We uh, embarked on a very uh, ambitious land and river restoration project in Warner Parks to remove two of the very large. Uh, shelters that were sitting on the riparian buffer for years. In today's world, you would never build a shelter right on the riverbank for environmental reasons. We worked with the Metro Water Services. They did all the depaving and the demolition. Cumberland River Compact came in and helped us plant 125 trees, which they're going to keep alive for the next 20 years, or at least five years, until then they have a chance to grow for at least 20 years. We um, our, we have, we're paving a great, set, great new section of that park, and we have uh, put up two beautiful new park shelters. This is one of them. So we took down shelters 10 and 11 and replacing with two large shelters at 9 and 10. And um, we'll hope to have a little ribbon cutting then as well. There are beautiful um, new shelters and additions to Warner Parks. 
Uh, uh, many of you know we are restoring the Percy Werner Golf Course, which I said was built in 1937 and last restored in 1937. And this uh, project is well underway. We are waiting, um, working closely with the water department to get the course irrigated. It has been watered by hand for the uh, for, since its inception. And we have a whole new irrigation system, new trees and bunkers. Uh, the exciting thing about this is in the middle of the uh, area is a new practice facility, and it will be really uh, helpful for our youth programs pr programming that Metro Parks does there. Our hope is to open it in September of 2023. A lot will depend on the summer and the watering, et cetera. So um, in the fall of 2023, this park will be open. Uh, we have been working since 19, seven, or 2017 to uh, purchase these three properties and uh, we're now hopefully going to be transferring them by the end of the year and uh, there are three parcels and there are two more left along this corridor which we, one we have the first right of refusal and the other one we hope to get um, as well and then turn them back to the parks department. We hope to get the parks department in 2017 agreed to help us fund um, one of these properties for $150,000. We hope to receive that money um, by the end of our fiscal year which is um, June 30. And then we will transfer those 12 acres back to the park. We opened last week a new nature play area at the Warner Parks Nature Center, which included a new pavilion, a whole um, great number of new features. This 20 years ago, we built the first nature play um, facility at uh, Warner Parks or at the Nature Center, and it was very tired from so much use. And uh, there are some fabulous new structures that I'd love for you all to come and see. We let let the children sort of had a a um, practice uh, for the kids and the first thing they did was jump on the top of that um, playhouse. <laughs> that was the first place they went to go. Um, let's see. And then we do a number of these. We're, we fund all these through 100% private donations. We have a number of events that um, help fund the, these events. And in addition to uh, just donations from a number of capital, the capital campaign that we've been doing. Our total investment in the park, uh, which will end the, this fiscal June 30, is over $3.23 million uh, in fiscal year 23-24. So we're very, or excuse me, yeah, 22-23. So we are very proud of these investments into Warner Parks, and we are very grateful and proud of the relationship that we have with Metro Parks that enables us to do this together as a team. And um, we couldn't do it without you all, and we really feel like, again, our goal is to keep Warner Park sustainable for the next 100 years for the next generation to use. We have a full moon pick and party coming up. I gave you all some tickets to that. I hope you will join us and have a fabulous board of directors that helps direct all of these um, initiatives and investments into the park and programming. How'd I do? Do I go over? <laughs> Just, Just a little. Time? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Any questions? Any questions, comments? Y'all continue to do a fantastic job, and Thank we appreciate you. that. That's a great partnership. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amazing. All right. We're going to move to Friends of Hadley Tennis to present annual update to the board. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. I am Fanny Holmes, and I am the president of our board, Friends of Halley Park Tennis. And we really would like to thank Metro our Board of Parks and Recreation for allowing us to come back and present our program to you again this year. I'm going to get out of the way because our director here, Mr. Joe Goldthree, you all know him. He talks a lot. So I'm going to step aside so he can present our program. It's a pleasure to be here today and to talk to you again. Uh, this is my 49th year. I started with Spears in Parks, and I donated my time for 49 years. I met my wife at Paddy Park. Uh, I'd like to talk about Fanny Holmes and James Holmes. They were the ones that got me started in tennis. And their son is our new treasure. He grew up in the program. He graduated from Stanford on a full tennis scholarship in Birmingham, and he's our new treasure. 
We're in a transition period now that me and Fanny have crossed that 76 age bracket that we are bringing younger people in. We're the largest NJTL program in the United States. We're the biggest, and we have more kids to get scholarships than any of them put together. One thing about our program is that we are integrated. We do the city, we do the country club, and we do the servers. All with Stefan, Stephon working with us in the community centers. We will start that back this summer since COVID is gone. We're going to bring broken down Betty White. She got a, a redone leg. She's gone. She's been with us for about 50 years. And she wanted to come back and do what she can with our inner city and suburban children. Our program in the winter uh, indoor facilities is always packed. We had 172 kids sign up on the Fork Tennis Court. You know that was impossible, but we kept it up. In the summer program, we do programs at the Halley Park uh, Tennis Center, and we also do it at the Richmond Country Club, Bell Meat Country Club, all the country clubs. We go there, and they come to us, and all the kids get a chance to play. We have a great program. One thing I, I, I got to tell you, and I'm going to bring this out because it needs to be said. I was on TV out there in Palm Springs, California. I was promoted uh, to be I hope they can see it. And I would like y'all to see it. And then we'll be back with it. I am the first African American and part of the Western Racial Facility. International Master Tennis Pro Worldwide. If I go, I'll be going to Egypt and Ghana. I'll be going to Israel. I'll be going anywhere. I'll my president, I will have to put this sign up. Dennis Vandermeer, Billie Jean King, they are all, I finally made it where they were uh, today. <laughs> and when I put this sign up, they talk about one thing, that I'm the only one that was with Park and Recreation. And all the Park and Recreation directors come here to visit Halley and see how it's run and we want to be able to direct them over here and let's step on, Steve on, be able to uh, tell them what's going on. Turn around, let everybody see the, that's so impressive. If you approve us for one more year, I remember when we used to have five years. Uh, that didn't last long. <laughs> Uh, but if you approve us, I don't know if this is going to be my last year or not. That's 50 years. Uh, you know, that's, I'm betting it's not. That's, that, that, that's too long. But uh, we want to make sure that we represent this park board. It has really changed since the first time I came here, 50, 49 years ago. But it's always done for the best. We got good personnel here. We had good personnel then. Even though me and Jimmy fights, Tom Lynch and them, we all fought. <laughs> but we came up with a system that our graduate kids who played tennis and became, you know, I want to stop for a few seconds before I leave. All the people that, in politics here, director of schools, was our secretary at Halley Park. Jury Schloss was one of our tennis players. At tennis. I can keep going down the line. Out of your uh, 30 councilmen, 24 of them went through Halley Park's program. So we want to be thankful, and I want to just appreciate the opportunity to speak to you once again. Well, it's always a, a great pleasure when you do. It's very uplifting. It's amazing what you've done, all of you. We don't believe that age. But we would maybe check licenses later, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to go past 50. But seriously, it's amazing what y'all do there. It's, it's moving, and, and that is so well-deserved, and you make us all proud. Thank you. They got to make the vote. No, no, we don't have a, I don't think we have anything to vote on. You, we'll make a motion that you stay on for 10 more years. Is there a thing? Okay.
That was fantastic. All right, we're going to move on to capital projects update, Tim. Okay, I'll be quick and just, uh, as usual, hit the highlights. Um, they are, uh, will be mobilizing at Port Negley for the second phase of stonework repair this month. Um, uh, we're also working with the design team to uh, develop the uh, scope of work for Fort Negley master plan implementation uh, phase one. Did I say stonework repair phase one? It's stonework repair phase two, master plan phase one that we're about to launch design on. Um, at Hadley Lillard Park, the engraving is at long last uh, finished on the corner monument sign. Um, uh, Ravenwood Park, uh, they're getting close to wrapping that up. We probably have about a month more of work on that. Mill Ridge is not too far behind. Um, at Woodmont Park, friends of Woodmont Park have completed the basketball court. There's still some um, seed and straw and other minor kind of punch list items to be done, but I believe people are um, using that. And then if you didn't notice on your way and you may not notice on your way out, a couple of months ago, you all approved a land swap uh, on Parthenon Avenue. Um, that has not been finalized yet, but they are currently in the process of demolishing the house on the property that we will receive. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? All right, we'll move. Thank you. Um, ask Cindy. Thanks, Tim. Uh, ask Cindy Harrison to come up for Greenway's update. Hi. Yes. Um, before I get started, I did want to introduce two new staff members to the Greenway's team. Um, David Diaz Barriga joined us about four weeks ago, and Erica Green uh, started Monday, yesterday. So I um, hope you all welcome them. They are both urban planners. David has been with Metro for a while, and Erica has just arrived here from Dallas over the weekend. Um, so we're really excited to have them. They're already working. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Project updates. Um, the Charlotte Railway Trail, we are doing a deep dive into title searches under the rail line itself as we continue to uh, finalize the route for that project. Uh, the 440 Greenway project, Severe Park to Browns Creek, continuing to finalize construction documents on that draw on that project, as well as outside our door, the 440 Greenway that will connect down to Centennial Park. Um, we've got two feasibility studies underway: Fort Negley um, Greenway to Browns Creek to determine if we can connect those. Via Greenway, we've got a couple of possible routes. We've we've looked at five, and uh, we'll go out and do some site reconnaissance on that and, and see if we can tie that down. Uh, the other study is to see if we can connect the future Wharf Park to Riverfront Park down at river level, uh, in addition to what we're already planning up at, from Early Mill Hill. And we also have several alignment options on that that we're working through. So um, those are... Moving on along, um, a couple of projects that would um, bring greenways, and I've, brought, I've talked with you all about these a few times. These are private developments that are happening that would add to our greenway system. Just give you a quick update on those. The Richland Creek Greenway that would be affected by the Bellme Plaza um, project passed Metro Council's second reading, but I understand there's still quite a bit of a discussion to be had on that. And then the Ariza Bellevue project that would extend our Harpeth River Greenway goes to the Planning Commission this Thursday. So um, just I'll keep you posted as those go along. We've also had quite a few, uh, I think four now, projects on Pennington Bend that will um, provide greenway easements. And those are working their way through the Planning Commission process as well. Um, I think Tim may have mentioned, but I'll just in case I didn't hear it, the Trinity Hills Habitat project that we're working on in um, Trinity Haynes area is moving forward. We're looking at easements there that would do provide some neighborhood connectivity. And there was one more. Nope, that's it. Remind me, um, I'll try to keep track. How many miles of Greenway do we have now? We have just at 100 miles. We have 10 miles in design right now. That includes, so we'll be at 110 or we'll be at 100? I'm sorry? Will that, we'll have 110 after that? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Good. 
Do you mind giving a quick update on Opry Mills Connector, the status and sure. the construction? Uh -huh. um, so we're getting ready to send those, um, finalize those projects for bidding. Uh, we've been through all the permitting and all the NEPA requirements. That project will take us from the pedestrian bridge existing that connects two rivers over to Shelby Bottoms. Mm -hmm. It's a one mile trail leading down to Opry Mills right up really to the building. And uh, the addition of that connection from riverfront over to the mall building itself was an add on. And so there was some extra permitting to do on that and that's complete. So we hope to get that out to bid this summer. It's anticipated to be an 18 month construction project. Any other questions? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. We'll ask Jackie to come up and talk about her upcoming special activities and events. Good evening. So we have a lot going on and I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say that. So I'm going to try to run through these fairly quickly because you have three pages of listed events that are going on in parks throughout Davidson County. So I'm just going to touch on the highlights. For those people who are listening at home, you can always go to uh, www.nashville.gov slash parks and there is a complete listing of all of the events that you will hear here. So um, let me get started here. We have farmer farmers markets uh, going on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon at Richland Park and from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Severe Park. Uh, the Musicians Corner Spring Series kicks off at 4 p.m on Saturday, May 19th in Centennial Park and runs through June 17th. Jazz on the Cumberland, which is a very popular event, kicks off Sunday, May 14th at 5.30 at Cumberland Park and will run consecutive Sundays uh, through October. The full moon, uh, the full picking parties, uh, we have those going on at both Cornelia Fort and Warner. The one at Warner starts at 5.30 p.m. on Friday, May 19th, and runs through September 15th. And the one at Cornelia Fort starts at 6 p.m. Saturday, May 20th. And of course, there's the Iroquois steep Steeplechase, excuse me, that's Saturday, May 13th, at Percy Warner Park. On Friday, May 19th, we have the Outside Cinema from 6.30 to 9 p.m. at Mill Ridge Park. Also on the on May 19th, we have the Nashville Jazz Workshop from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Hadley Park. Uh, this Saturday from 11 to 2, we have World Migratory Bird Day Festival at the Shelby Bottoms Nature Center, which will feature the signing of the Urban Bird Treaty. Uh, Nashville, I think someone mentioned that here. Nashville has been selected as a bird treaty city because of its collective efforts to conserve bird habitats, reduce hazards to birds, and engage our city residents and guests about the per importance of birds and bird conservation. Nashville, I'm told, is the first city in the state to receive the designation and the 31st city uh, in the nation to have this de designation as well. Uh, other events include the Music City Brewers Conference Disc Golf Tournament. Uh, that's on the 11th. We have Shop Black Nashville on the 13th at Hadley Park. We had Kids to Park Day, which is also at Hadley Park. That's on May 20th. Uh, and then we have the BMX Nationals uh, at Hamilton Creek Park beginning at 9 a.m. And that concludes my report. Jackie. Um, all right, the report of the director. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so I will also keep my report brief. Um, so as you all know, our um, council budget hearing uh, for the FY24 budget is next week, next Thursday at 4.30. Um, I am overall uh, very pleased with uh, what is in the mayor's proposed budget for our department. Um, we will have some um, we have some items that are recommended for um, investments uh, across the department, uh, maintenance, recreation, uh, community centers, 
um, environmental education, revenue producing, and then in some of our um, all other, as we talk about all the time, um, our discretionary areas uh, are recommended um, um, to open community centers, um, all of our community centers, neighborhood and regionals, um, on Saturdays from 8 to 4. That's exciting. I've uh, been here in parks for about 17 years and can can remember when we had to take that reduction to um, close some of our community centers on Saturdays and we are slowly inching back. So I'm excited to, to um, be able to do that, hopefully. Um, the community has, has long wanted community center hours extended on the weekend and hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and get that started in um, FY24. Um, to support the city's efforts in managing uh, kind of the volumes of pedestrian activity downtown, um, we have temporarily suspended uh, vending permits in the downtown area. Um, there some, was some recent legislation that went through council um, for uh, right-of-way areas. Um, MMPD has been involved as well, so we're going to support that effort um, and um, hopefully we'll um, add to that success. Um, our department will begin engagement with Metro's DEI team um, later this month. We're going to start with the senior staff um, and begin to um, work on our equity inclusion effort in the, in the department. Um, and then, uh, of course, as I always mention, our maintenance staff and all of our uh, team across the department are um, preparing facilities and locations for outdoor activities. Um, programming for um, summer uh, summer enrichment and other areas um, has started. Um, so we are very busy. And just a note that uh, we are experiencing, like uh, experiencing, like many other industries, um, um, supply chain issues. So I'd ask that everyone be patient with us uh, in terms of. Uh, any repairs or equipment that we probably have on order or back order, uh, we are just caught in that mix of, of that delay. Um, I think that's all I wanted to mention, unless you have any further questions for me. I was just looking at the memorandum on the operating budget to actual. Mm -hmm. On the vacant, so we have, is it, do we add those two columns? Is it 400 total vacant or 108 or 586? So it would be a vacant position, and that's all funds, across all funds, 405. But you will notice that the, the vacant FTE, that's 405 positions, but 181.03 FTE. So it's important to, to know that those vacancies include pool, pool, pooled positions. So it could be sports officials, those on call, and seasonals. We're in the process of hiring for seasonal positions, so those will feel that number will change. So we had a lot of vacant openings. We have several vacancies. Just remember they're not all full-time. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, do we have, I know we talked about that this before in here, do we have a strategy around that? Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We are is it getting better? It, oh, yeah, it is yeah. better. It is better. It's a, it's a lot better. We've hired uh, a number of positions. I mean, uh, Cindy just spoke to two that, that she has hired. Um, we are, though, having challenges. I'll be quite frank. We are having challenges with um, retaining people. Um, and, it, and it has to do with the job market and the labor force. Um, we have had a number of positions filled. We hire folks. Um, they come to work and then find something more lucrative um, in in the labor force to do. So they so they leave, or um, they'll come. We may have ten um, interviews set up and only two people show up. So it is a challenge for for us. Um, one of the things um, that we have, I'm happy to to note in the FY24 budget, particularly in our maintenance division is um, improvements to a classification. So we will um, um, transfer or transfer some of our maintenance and repair positions to equipment operator positions. If you'll recall, I had mentioned in some of our committee meetings that there is 
um, and has been uh, for years, um, kind of internal competition within Metro, um, our maintenance department, um, NDOT, uh, formerly Public Works, and Water have similar classifications, maintenance and uh, trades and labors and such. And we had not used the equipment operator um, classification, which is a higher paying uh, classification, we will begin to do that now. So at least we can try to eliminate that internal to metro um, competition. Because we would had, again, as I, I told you in some commu uh, committee meetings, um, people who were in our maintenance division would leave our department and go to another department simply because of the pay, quite frankly. Um, and we are hoping to close that gap with some of the improvements or investment requests that we've um, hopefully will see fulfilled in FY24. Um, any questions or? Any other items, anyone? Um, do we have, um, I'm, I don't know how we would, if we ever had the information of how many visitors we have at certain parks. I'm just curious how many people, is there any way to figure out, we talk about, you know. We, I think in terms of just visitation to parks, there are, there are ways to do that, yeah, to d different parks, um, to places like Centennial Park, where the where the visitors likely go to the um, the Parthenon, the attendance, we definitely would have those numbers. But that, yeah, there's a way for us to I think estimate. Be, I think it'd be good if we look at that quarterly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Quarterly. Okay. Sure. Um. Okay. Any other items from the board? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. What? Which one? Oh, I'm sorry. The July 4th meeting will be moved to July 11th, since July 4th is on a Tuesday this year. Um, thank you. I almost forgot that. Um, and any of us who can show up at council on May 18th to support Monique and staff would be great. I'll check my schedule as well. So, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. We had a little bit longer meeting than normal. And uh, I'll entertain a motion of... So moved. Dismissal. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.